In this example, I'm going to consider what happens with a converging lens when the object distance is six centimeters, six centimeters away from the lens. The focal length is twice as big, 12 centimeters, and the object height is um, two centimeters. And we want to figure out what is the image distance, the magnification, and the image height. We can do it computationally, but we, well, we can also use the ray diagram to help us understand what the answers should be. So what we'll do is we'll start off by indicating that since we have the focal lengths indicated here with two blocks, and that represents 12 centimeters, we'll put the object distance one block away, um, so roughly here. Okay, that'll represent our object. Okay, if that represents six centimeters away, then the focal length is 12 centimeters away. And it has a height of, we'll, we'll call that two centimeters. To figure out where the image is going to be, we'll draw our, our three rays. I like to start off with the ray that passes, that starts off coming in parallel to the optical axis. And then, as a converging lens is designed to do, the rays that come out, if they came in parallel to the axis, they will come out and converge towards the focus. So that would be the path of one of the rays. The other ray would look kind of like that in reverse. It would look like if the ray were to first pass through the focus on the same side, it would hit the lens and then go parallel to the axis. Well, it's in front of the focus, so it doesn't really make sense to draw the ray, even though there is one, it doesn't make sense to draw the, the ray that does this, right? going that in that direction because it never hits the lens. Instead, what we'll do is we'll draw the ray that goes in the other direction toward the lens as if it came from the focus. It hits the lens, and then, as the lens is designed to do, it travels parallel to the optical axis. So that path would look something like this. You can already see that these rays are not going to intersect anywhere on the right side of this diagram. That's an indication that we probably need to go back and start asking the question, if somebody was over here looking at what was going on, we'd have to ask that person, where does it look like those rays are coming from, from your point of view? So to do that, I'll revisit each of these rays and say, well, someone would say that the yellow ray looks like it came from back here. I'm indicating that with a dashed line to let you know there isn't really a light ray back there, but for all intents and purposes, we can say that it looks like there is, or we can say that this is so-called virtual ray. And we should do the same thing with the green ray as well. Try your best to line things up if you can. Someone would conclude it looks like that green ray came from back here. So we can already get a sense that there's going to be an intersection point, a virtual intersection point, that is on the same side uh, of the lens as the object itself. Remember, this is the object, and we're trying to figure out where the image is and what it looks like. The last thing to do is to draw the ray that passes through the center of the lens. We go from the head of the object, and we go through the center of the lens, keeping in mind that this probably isn't going to be perfect, but it should give us a good sense of what is supposed to happen. This ray would go through the lens this way, and for anyone on that side, they would say it looked like it came from back here. And so we do see at least a rough intersection in this general vicinity, enough to conclude that probably the image head is there and it comes down. Remember, the tail is viewed in sort of just along the axis as just the object was. But that would be roughly where the image should be. So based on this, the expectation is that when we actually do the calculation, we should find the image distance to be approximately as far away from the lens as the focal length is. 
The way that we measure things, though, recall that the object distance is always positive, but we measure things, we measure distances positively on the opposite side of the lens, and we measure distances negatively on this side of the lens. So this image distance is going to be negative, and it looks like it's approximately equal to the focal length. So we'll make the guess that the image distance is approximately minus 12 centimeters. It also looks like the magnification, it's certainly going to be positive because this image looks upright, not inverted. So our expectation is that the magnification is positive. It also looks like it's going to be bigger than one. In fact, it's probably going to be about two centimeters, at least if our picture here is okay. And then lastly, the object, or sorry, the image height, if it's two, if it's two times as big, then we might guess that the image height, and these are approximate, uh, image height would be approximately four centimeters. So now we'll actually plug things into the lens equation and see how it works out. Lens equation, one over di plus one over do is equal to one over f. And we might as well use that first to figure out what is di. One over di is one over f minus one over do. The focal length is 12, so 1 over 12 centimeters. The object distance is 6 centimeters, so minus 1 over 6. 1 over 6 is the same as 2 over 12, so this is like 1 over 12 minus 2 over 12 in the units of inverse centimeters. And what that works out to be is minus 1 over 12 inverse centimeters. And I take the inverse of both sides, and that tells me that di is, in fact, minus 12 centimeters. So we actually got that one pretty good. We can now think about what the magnification is. The magnification is either image height over object height, or you can write it as minus the image distance divided by the object distance. We'll use that one. Minus, and then the image distance is itself negative, so two negatives make a positive. The object distance was six centimeters. So there's a, an overall positive, 12 over six, the centimeters cancel, and we do find that the magnification is two. So we got that right as well. And that suggests we'll, we're likely gonna figure out that the image height is also correct. We can rearrange this to solve for the image height. Object height times the magnification should give us that. That's two centimeters times a magnification of two is four centimeters, and that is the image height, which we had guessed. So we should be quite happy with that. There you go. And uh, we have an image. It is upright. It is uh, positively magnified. It's, it's, a, it's an enlarged image. And this is also a so-called virtual image because it is formed by the intersection of virtual rays. Again, there's not really any rays back there, but for anybody looking at it, like this guy over here, they're going to say that's what it looks like. And so we call such images virtual. They can't actually be projected onto a screen. They can't be, for example, uh, put onto photographic film and recorded. But for anybody over here that's looking at that, that's where, where they will conclude the image is.